Now, there is something else that is happening, and I want to I want to warn you that and and also tell you this is good news, but warn you if you do not start to stand up, and I mean really stand up peacefully and make sure that you your voices are heard in a chorus all over the country we will shortly fall into some sort of fascism communism i have no idea what it ends up being but it looks like fascism is coming uh and uh it's going to come faster and faster because the biden thing is falling apart you're starting to see the corruption, and it's being proven now. The mainstream media is not paying attention to this. But once this starts to come out in open hearings, I don't think they're going to be able to avoid it. You'll see President Biden get sick, step down, something to keep this buried as much as possible because uh, it is getting really bad. And it is showing that everyone is involved in it. Biden's story had been that he threatened to uh, withhold a loan to Ukraine only because the prosecutor Shokin was not at uh, was not meeting anti-corruption standards. Do you remember this? Uh, this is we found the audio during the uh, Trump impeachment where. Biden openly said, yeah, I fired uh, Shogun because he was a dirty, corrupt prosecutor. And he was, you know, he was doing all kinds of things wrong. Here's exactly what he said. I'm desperately concerned about the backsliding on the part of uh, uh, Kiev in terms of corruption. They made, I mean, I'll, I'll give you one concrete example. I, I, I was... Not I, I, but it just happened to be that was the assignment I got. I, I, I got all the good ones. Uh, and uh, so I got Ukraine. And uh, um, I remember going over convincing our team, our <coughs> others, to convincing us that we should be providing for loan guarantees. And I went over, I guess, the 12th, 13th time to Kiev. And, uh, and I was going, supposed to announce that there was another billion dollar loan guarantee. And I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from uh, Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. So they said they had. They were walking out to press conference. Said, "No, nah. I said I'm not going to. We're not going to give you the billion dollars." They said, "You have no authority. You're not the president." The president said, "I said call him." <laughs> I said, "I'm telling you, you're not getting the billion dollars." I said, you're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Well, son of a <laughs> got fired. And they put in place someone who was solid. Okay, stop. At the time. This is, this is now provable lies on multiple levels. We now know that, what was it, a week before or two weeks before, uh, his son was in a Burisma meeting talking about how that uh, investigator, that prosecutor, was snooping into Burisma and asking questions about Hunter Biden and also the guy who was really corrupt that ran it, an oligarch. So they, we now know that in this meeting, they went aside and first, Devin Archer said they called... Uh, the president, Hunter called the president or vice president, Joe Biden, uh, and uh, and they worked it out. The, then his attorney came back after break and he's like, are you sure you know he called the vice president? He's like, no, he called somebody in Washington. Yeah, I, I stand corrected on that. OK, so who did he call in Washington? Because within two weeks, this incident happens where he goes and he says, I want this guy fired. Now, he said, you'll call the president. You can't do that. Yeah, I can't call the president. They never called the president. They should have called the president. We now know that the White House and the State Department said the exact opposite of what Joe Biden was saying. Now there is new evidence. So we have the State Department communicating with the White House saying, this guy's doing a great job. Great job. He's meeting all of his standards. We're clear. Okay. 
But everybody knew, according to Joe Biden, that it wasn't wasn't working. That was their big sell when all of this came out, was that it wasn't just Joe Biden thought this. It was the consensus of all everybody. countries. Like uh, everybody. all of the civilized world they understood that okay. this guy was corrupt. So we've had now the documents from the State Department saying th- that's not true. Mm-hmm. Okay, At the time, they're writing how great this guy's doing. And now we have... Um, evidence from the EU where the EU concluded Shokin had met benchmarks on anti-corruption reforms. In fact, uh, it's pretty glowing what they write about him. Now, remember, this narrative came out because what did did, uh, Donald Trump do? Donald Trump said, hey, He calls up the president of Ukraine. I want you to find out what's going on because there is corruption uh, with Biden, and I want you to look into it. He knew that this was happening, okay? But what do the Democrats do? They try to say, look, he's trying to get dirt on on his possible uh, opponent in an election. That's election interference. That's what the press sold you. We told you it wasn't true. We told you he's trying. Eventually, as we did our homework on this during the trial, we laid it all out on a huge chalkboard and said, Biden is doing exactly what he's saying that that Trump was doing. And this whole firing of Shokin smells really bad. So at the time, Shokin was investigating the activities of Burisma and Hunter Biden who had no experience in the energy industry, yet he was being paid at least $83,000 every month. The European Commission, in new documents, said, based on these commitments, the anti-corruption benchmark is deemed to have been achieved. This is from the governing body of anti-corruption. It was a generally rosy assessment of Ukraine's pace of reforms, according to the uh, uh, efforts of Shokin's prosecutor general's office. Uh, They noted that Shokin, just a few months on the job, had already established a special national and anti-corruption prosecutor's office to aid newly reformed FBI-approved investigative unit called the National Anti-Corruption Bureau. Now, we told you that we had a problem with that. I did. Because that was a joint effort from the United States and George Soros. So now, do we have anything about George Soros and what he was saying? Because he's the co-founder, along with the United States of America, of this new anti-corruption. So uh, we uh, we actually do have something. Um, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, EU praising more on the EU. I mean, they just praised, 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 praised. Uh, and then you get to the, uh, Soros information and Soros also said his group said that he was meeting all of the benchmarks and was doing a great job. So now wait. Wait. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, also, the phone call. The phone call to Joe Biden. It was all taped from uh, Poroshenko, that is the head guy of Ukraine at the time, telling Joe Biden in an audio tape, okay, we don't have any information on these corruption charges. We don't have any corruption charges standing against this guy. You're not providing us any information. We have no information on why he is suddenly offensive to the United States. Uh, But I asked him to resign. Can we get our billion dollars? Joe said yes. So you have the president on tape with our vice president saying, we have no information. We have nothing. But you're holding the billion dollars. And so, I mean... I I guess we're going to fire him, but we'd like the information because we don't know why we're firing him. 
because the State Department, the White House, George Soros, and the EU all said the guy was doing a great job right before he got on the plane. Guys, what else does anyone need? When this stuff actually starts to be in a trial of some sort, it's over. It's over. Because that is, honestly, that's just the beginning. We now also have new evidence that shows the feds uh, were alerted by Morgan Stanley. They blew the whistle in 2015 and said... Hunter Biden and his associates are involved in fraudulent and suspicious transactions. Not only did they flag this, but they then elevated because nobody was doing anything. The vice president uh, went from from uh, Morgan Stanley and went to the SEC and said, guys, you've got to look at that. This is there is something really wrong. And now through Freedom of Information Act, we now have uh, a presentation that they made to their compliance officers inside Morgan Stanley saying, this is dirty. There, there is money laundering going on here. Then we also have one more piece from the Washington Examiner. We now know that one of Joe Biden's um, emails suggest a close Biden family associate, somebody who was named in the warnings by Morgan Stanley and who was working with Hunter Biden, went to work under David Weiss. And he was involved in the conversations on how to shape the stories related to Hunter Biden's work for Burisma. So the guy eventually investigating who's, you know, he's totally clean. He has no, well, no, he's got all the power in the world to do whatever he wants. Well, is apparently what he wanted was one of Hunter Biden's apparently corrupt uh, uh, workers and a, 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 a good friend of the Biden family was involved with his office trying to shape the narrative. And it only gets worse. I mean, those are the highlights. If you don't have if you don't have my show prep every day, please get it. It's free. It's at glenbeck.com. All these stories and so much more. But warning, there's nothing worse than a an animal that's been backed into a corner. We're going to have to stand up, square our shoulders, speak the truth and hold on to the Republic.